and welcome to Outdoors for Adventure. In this video, we're going to talk about a little bit of shade. If you do car camping, as I have set up here, having something come off the back of the vehicle or even freestanding that provides shade is a great thing. Because just getting the sun off of you will cool you down some. And even though you might have a fan, that helps a lot. If you can get out of the sun, you're not going to get sunburned and you're going to feel a lot better. So, this company, Fee Wood Gear, sent me a car awning that's not permanently attached to your vehicle. And it's a little bit different than what I would call a car tent because this is going to be open air. So let's open up the bag. And this is a very nice bag and I love the color. High quality raw materials. We choose the most suitable raw materials to keep the price close to the people while ensuring function, texture, and durability. High quality materials are wasteful if they are not treated well. We strive for good tailoring and sewing so that our products stand out the best. We're manufacturers committed to providing high quality products at low cost. One year warranty, 24 hours customer service online, and of course they have all the social medias at www.feewoodgear.com. As you can see, I'm already sweating up a storm. We're going to get up in the triple digits today and some of the rest of the week. So it's all nicely rolled up. You can see the instructions are sewn into the bag. And this particular awning, you can set it up a few different ways. And the first way we're going to set it up is going to be off to the back of the Jeep. Let's tie our straps. I should have put them in the bag so I don't lose them. But for now, I'm just going to put them on the table over here. Now, this is a pretty good size awning. Here in this bag, you're going to have your tent stakes. Or, or awning stakes, I should say. Now, first thing I noticed grabbing hold of this bag is it's very well made, and they even reinforced the bottom so your stakes won't poke a hole through it. Very nice. Which, with in my hand, are the stakes. They're very heavy. They're pretty long. They're the nail type. Heavy duty plastic. On top to hold your cords. And talking about cordage, we have nice heavy cordage and some really cool tighteners or adjusters. These are your suction cups to mount on top of your vehicle, you're gonna have two of them. And there's two areas that you will hook across the top of your hatch. And these have clips, very heavy duty suction cups. So we got two of those. We have one, two, three, four, five, we have six stakes, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six 
straps with the adjusters. And of course the two suction cups. And these are going to be your poles. Depending on how you set this up, you can use one pole or you can use two poles. And then if you're like me and you get creative and you have some extra poles, you might can do something totally different. Same thing on this bag. The bottom is reinforced. Very nice. Very nice. Hopefully that won't blow away. This is your first poles. They have a strap to hold them together. They are spring loaded. They're also a really good diameter pole. This will go through the eye on your awning and this will be the foot. So like I said, you have two of those. We're going to go ahead and put this one together too. There's our two poles. Now normally, I would set this up first before I got all my gear out. But I already had this set up because I'm getting everything ready for a pretty big trip, actually two trips, and I'm making sure that I have the setup the way I want. And when this company, when Feewood got a hold of me about this, uh, I definitely wanted to have this in time to make our trip. So I appreciate them sending it to me. And so far, I'm already impressed with the quality that I'm seeing in the materials and the way it's sewn together and the way it's made. So we have nice straps. These are going to hook on your uh, wheels. Two of those. I love the color. Like I said, this is a pretty nice size awning. See wood gear. Man, this is nice. All right, and that feed wood gear. It's going to be your end away from the vehicle. Turn this off for now. It's not helping any. All right. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to bring the hatch down Get an idea of where my magnets are going to go. There's the hook.
And there's the hook. So there's the center seam. So it looks like this is the first time I've set this up. So it looks like I can put the suction right against my rails. You can see these are the sticky suction cups. So we're going to wipe a section off up here to make sure there's no dirt. Go do the other side, let that dry. You've been down a bunch of dirt roads and such, you're going to want to wipe the dust off of it. And then you're going to hook these with your hooks facing out or toward the rear. So you'll set them, you'll press down and click it. And that's, that's it. We're going to do the same with this one, peel off that plastic. Come over here, hook facing out, try to line it up the same as that one, press, there we go. Now we're going to find these adjustable straps here. So you can adjust them however you want. And I'm going to keep it pretty close. And then I'm just going to clip it in the clip up here. Now, I'm using their clips, okay? But I have a roof rack on my vehicle. So most times, I won't be using these clips. I will just use these Velcro straps around my rack and I'll show you that in a close-up after I get this set up. I'm going to tighten this one up the same as that other one. And then clip it in the clip. Now I'm going to go ahead and hook this to my tire. And I'm going to show you all close-ups of this after I get done. Now let's go ahead and raise the hatch. Now we can tell more about where we want to hook this. I think I want to pull it up some. 
and go more toward the front of the tire. Now let's hope I'm far enough away from my camper. So you can see here, there's a hole. So you can use the middle hole. And in fact, I think we'll use the middle hole. All right, so we're going to grab one of these nice cords that they gave us. We only need one right now. That's a short one. That looks like it'd be long enough. And I'm just gonna tie a loop in it. Nothing fancy. And I'm going to grab my little screwdriver handle and a stake. And then we're going to pull this out and up. Try to line it up with the center of the Jeep. And then I'm going to come straight back. So I'm just going to go to the ground with this corner. I hope I've got y'all in camera range because I said this thing is big. And I'm just going to pull it tight. Just lock that. Now let's go do the other corner. Now I hope I have room. I didn't realize how much room I was going to need. I have to go under the camper. Uh, 
And now we have these center ones that we can do. Back you up a little bit more. And as you can see I'm in our backyard. I always set our stuff, our new stuff up back in the backyard before I get out. That way I can get this stuff set up quicker. This is my first time setting this up. All right. I'll do the same thing here. I'm just going to tie a loop in it because I'll leave them attached. And then we'll come through this loop. Just like that. And I'll show you how these tighteners work. So when I put this one in, I put it in a little bit loose. And then you just basically pull this. I know you're all a long ways off. Get it pretty tight. That's a long one. This is a long one. Okay, maybe they're all long. All right, we're going to take this one here. I'm going to leave those right there for now. I'm going to grab another stake, and I'm, I'm going to tie off that other corner. And hope I have room because of the camper. Now, there's some more loops right here. So we're gonna make this thing really good and sturdy. Just gonna tie a loop through here, like I did the other ones. Nothing fancy. I'm gonna slide it through here. Just like that. I can already tell te uh, temperature difference. It's like I have two straps left.
but I have used all of my tent stakes. So I'm going to use one of my own because I want to go ahead and put one over here too. If the wind gets up, I don't want to worry about this going anywhere. I like the peak set up like this in case it's going to rain. This is going to shed water better than if I used the two pole setup. But we will add the two pole, the second pole in this setup so y'all can see what that looks like too. That's going to create more headspace to walk around in. Okay, so we've got it set up this way. I did add one of my own stakes. Uh, but anyway, this is the one pole set up. I'm staked off in both corners. And then I used every one of the front straps to tie it down. One pole in the center. Look at all that space up in there. And then I went ahead and I, this is the stake I added. And then the corner stake down over there. You can tell we have a lot of wind. But the thing about it is when you walk up in here, you can just feel all that air coming through here like you're in an air tunnel. Oh, that feels good. I don't even need a fan. So, uh, yeah. Plenty of room to walk around in here. So to recap, you can see how I have it hooked to my rim. Pretty much any way you can get it hooked is going to work. Then I used the mm, suction cups to hold this top, but all I actually have to do is use these straps to go to my roof rack. So I, these I won't need for my setup. Plenty of room. I've got a couple chairs, tables, fan. Like I said, nice stakes. Fasteners, so you will pull through this hole, then pull it through here, and then the rest of the slack come through here, and that tightens it up and holds it. Lots of stitching on these hold downs. Nice material, beautiful color. Their logo is really nice. And it's like I said, you can see the wind's blowing. And this is staying put. That is a lot of real estate underneath here. I could spread this stuff out even more. Climb up in there and go to sleep. You can shut the hatch. The wind feels good coming through here. Okay, I've already started pulling stakes up because we are going to use the two pole method now. And let's do this corner over here first. Instead of using this center pole, we we'll use this other one here. And it looks like I'm going to have to kind of redo all of it because that center is pretty tight. So let's loosen that up.
Now let's see what happens. All right, looks like I got a nice, pretty straight line where it needs to be over there. So we're going to go ahead and put this stake back in the ground. All right. Now I'm gonna have to loosen these stakes. Give this some, some slack. I may have to totally change that strap out because that's a short strap and I don't know if it's gonna be long enough. Here we got. My camper wasn't there. I could have went around that way some more. Now, I'm not going to be able to I have to use a strap here now. I'm going to tighten this strap back up. <laughs> so now we're going to need the other strap. As you can see, that's not going to reach the ground. It is getting hot out here. I thought I'll, I think I prefer the center peak one pole if you have rain. But if you don't have rain, I'm liking this setup. Now, like I said, I am a bit close to the camper, so I don't have it quite centered because I couldn't pull the camper side back enough. All right. All right, guys, talk about some real estate now. And you can see the wind's blowing pretty good. Maybe a strap on that center coming down. 
There's so many options that you can do with this. The next one I'm going to do is I'm going to move that pole to the center. And I'm going to bring that down further to the ground. Now, I'm off center because I have the camper parked right there. And that's as far over as you know, I could set it up. And I didn't want to move everything. Uh, this is all experimental in the backyard. So, you know, I'm just figuring out the best ways to do it and the way I want to do it. But man, there is a lot of real estate right here. A lot of shade. And as the sun moves, I can drop this side down more, which I'm fixing to do, because that's where the sun's going to be coming in at, and it'll keep that sun blocked even more. All right, now I'm going to move this pole to the center. And I don't know if I'll be able to go all the way to the ground with that side or not. I th we'll find out. So let's just take this pole out. Let's come to the center here. We're going to have to steal our strap right here. You can see I'm working with this in the, in the wind. And so far, I have been able to handle it. It does make it a little more difficult. All right, so let's take this one out of here. Let's put it up here. And then we'll drive it in the ground. And now what I'll do is I want to lower this end. And I honestly think I'll be able to put that into the ground. Yep. So we're going to remove this strap and we're just going to put the stake directly in the loop. We're just going to go right through that loop. Get some pressure on it. Pulling this way and that way. I'm thinking about right there would be good. And then we need to move this one back some or tighten it. We're just going to tighten it up. I thought about trying to go closer to the ground. But we're just going to tighten it up. So you can see we have it set up a little bit different now. This one's pegged all the way to the ground. And we have this one a little bit higher. So the sun is going to be on that left side. That's going to help keep a little bit more sun. 
And right now the sun is actually shining right into the open end, but I still have half shade so I can still get in the shade even though the sun is shining right in this opening. The sun is right behind me, directly behind me. Okay, so I attached the top of the tarp up there to my roof rack instead of the suction cups. And with my hatch down, I got a nice tight pull and I can walk underneath that. And you still, you can see I still have shade. Again, the sun is pretty much behind me. And then instead of tying off to the tires, I went ahead and staked down to the ground, which I actually prefer. It keeps this off of the vehicle. And you can see that I just strapped to the roof rack. So now, if I need to bug out real quick, which as you can see, you have these right here. That you just release those and that's out. So, to pull out of here right now, all I have to do is undo these Velcro loops off of my roof rack on both sides and not worry about anything else, just pull out and I'm gone. A lot of real estate. And an advantage over this versus a awning, straight type awning that attaches to your vehicle is you're limited on how you can set that up. In fact, you pull it out, and about the only thing you can do is maybe lean a corner this way or that, but you're still, if you wanna get some shade, you're gonna to have to move your whole vehicle. So that's gonna mean tearing your awning down, moving your vehicle, and pulling it back out. Uh, this won't take near as long to set up now that I know how I wanna do it, and I kind of like this setup here. But if it starts raining and if the top starts sagging, I can remove this pole here, restretch these cords to where that is my center height over there. And of course, I'll be in a position to where that's actually going to be center of the vehicle the next time I set it up because I won't have my camper in the way. So I, I definitely will have that center line, center of the vehicle. And then you pretty much, once you have it attached to your vehicle and strapped at the front, you can do whatever you want with these sides and this back end. So that's what makes this so cool. And I mean, it's got some real estate and no matter what, you can get you some shade. So I know this video is kind of long, but I wanted to show as much of it and as many different configurations as I could. And uh, yeah, I like it. And like I said, we are getting some wind right now. So this is staying up. I'm standing up. My hat is touching the roof a little bit. And a lot of that's going to depend on how tall your vehicle is. And then if I want to raise the lid, up it goes. Okay, so I need to loosen my straps just a hair when I raise the roof. As you saw it come back down, which is not a real big deal. But I want it higher than that. So all I need to do is loosen my straps. So pretty much there you go.